Hello YouTube, this is MB and today we will talk about how to install NTOS 7 on VirtualBox. Well, uh, it's no big deal, but I thought and you know, I just make a video about it anyway, I am doing it. Uh, I have always been in a love and hate relationship with Linux. I love Linux, it was and it is still my preferred operating system. Uh, when it comes to, I would say, uh, doing stuff uh, if you're not a gamer or uh, if you want to just fiddle around you got time and you want to uh, learn the things hard way uh, this is it for you uh, it's not for your typical user uh, however all the flavors uh, the world of Linux is very very interesting uh, yeah I mean don't get me wrong I love Windows I mean I you 90% 99, I would say, uh, at now, uh, from last one and a half year or something, 99% of all my usage is uh, Windows. I use uh, Linux uh, barely at work uh, for some troubleshooting or whatever, right? Apart from that, it just... Um, just... Hey, let me... Why is this, this is getting confused? All right, apart from that, it is just... Um, um, here and there... Uh, if we gotta build something up or something, right? Only for that, mainly for work purpose. Other, for, other than that, no, we don't use it at all. all right, so I am enabling the network card here. If you are doing it for the first time, make sure you enable it by default. It's disabled. Uh, it's normal called ETH zero, as you can see earlier. Uh, we used to have ETH zero, right? Ethernet zero. Now it's E N P O S three. Uh, well, this is not about, you know, how and what of Linux. We will get into that maybe some other time. I want to uh, select the software. I always like to select um, a GUI with it. Uh, server with GUI, server for operating system networks, no, with a GUI, right? I can select GNOME. Uh, I love GNOME, uh, especially the old version, right? Uh, I'm not a big fan of the newer one. I want to keep it minimal, uh, even though I got, I've given like 10... MB uh, 10 GB of RAM. So here, if you want to select any additional packages, you can. KD, uh, KD is kind of it's a beautified mode. It's for those people who want to, um, you know, to make uh, to make it easy for those uh, from the Windows background or Mac, right? So you would love uh, KD. Well, there are a lot of other desktops uh, environment as well for, for CentOS or any other Linux operating system. But uh, most famous are the GNOME and KDE. So checking software dependencies. All right, you check whatever you want. Please complete items marked. All right, I'm waiting. So why uh, do you want to try, let's say, CentOS? CentOS, uh, it's also called uh, Scientific uh, OS. It is an offshoot of Red Hat. Uh, it's a uh, earlier... Uh, the people who started CentOS came out of Red Hat, started CentOS. They wanted to have you know something which is free, as in free beer as well, right? It's open source is not as you know it's it's not free. Uh, GPL and all that. So you got uh, open source means the source is open, the source code is open. Uh, you can probably get Red Hat uh, image somewhere else, but if you want support and updates, then you gotta pay for it. So Red Hat is not actually free, uh, even though it offers uh, all the freedom that you can get from your GPL license, general public license, right? Okay, I'm gonna keep the password very small and silly, and it's gonna, once, if I press enter once, it won't take it because it's too short or too silly, but I don't care. And I wanna create a user, uh, make this as administrator, you know me, MB, my last name, Password is going to be same, MB, MB, right. I'm going to click done. The password is too short, press done. We use it anyway, so I will do that. So unlike uh, Windows, you know, Windows kind of uh, try to protect you for wherever you go, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, Linux is in a way, uh, it will try to tell you once. Otherwise, you know, it's okay. You know what you're doing. I'll proceed, right? It's not... Um, uh, trying to guide you to use it. It's things that, okay, you uh, you know uh, what you're doing and you will, you know, reap what you sow, right? Uh, 
So as I was saying, uh, the history of CentOS, CentOS, uh, the people who started CentOS, they came uh, from Red Hat. They started CentOS, it became extremely famous, especially with uh, uh, those who uh, use Linux for scientific purposes, you know, a lot of mathematics, uh, those kind of stuff. Now, um, I think CentOS now is part of uh, Red Hat again. Uh, the people who are behind it are, most of them are still part of Red Hat, they work uh for centos and red hat now um don't worry about uh you know you might know that uh solaris you know the whole uh sun solaris oracle acquired it and you know solaris is now like no more there and it's not going to be like that because centos uh is gpl there are if you want you can involve uh in developing centos as well you can contribute to it or if you want you can take the red hats image itself and you can make whatever flavor that you want right you can just add some stuff out or remove some stuff out or customize it in a way or you can make it in a way that uh, as soon as you install it off the, out of the box it offers some features you want to do it for maybe for uh, multimedia editors you want to do it for maybe uh, some people um, who are into data science some people who do data analysis are some are those who are into a lot of podcasting or maybe gamers to Linux gamers right uh, so you can customize uh, what I mean you can do that with other flavors of Linux too but Red Hat and Debian mm, I would say they are like you know the top uh, two dogs the top dogs of the Linux operating systems just because uh, in terms of uh, the other flavors uh, are in terms of the number of operating systems that they have influenced uh, if you know Ubuntu the I would say I think that's probably the was the most famous and now probably the second most famous operating system first my I think it's mint Linux now mint again came out of uh, came from Ubuntu or it uh, majorly gets influenced by Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a derivative of Debian. Uh, so Debian, the package is, uh, if you know what's, uh, if you want to know if an operating system is from Debian or came from Deb, the uh, Debian as the uh, source, then you will see that most of the packages are .deb, right? If you want to install, just like in Windows, we have .exe and uh, Okay, again, I know that, okay, it's kind of sin um, to <laughs> for some people to say it's a Linux operating system. No, it's, it's. I would say it's a, I think I must say it's a free source operating system or GPL OS or free, free OS. It's one of the free operating system. Linux is just a kernel. Again, GNU is the, everything that except the kernel in most of the uh, Linux based operating system. So I would say uh, it's one of the free OS uh, out there. So you might be wondering, you know, what is open source now and what is this free stuff that you're talking about, right? So if you uh, Google, uh, you'll know what is open source versus GPL. The open source is a term, uh, GPL, uh, most of the people when they say open source, they mean that, okay, it's uh, it's free. Uh, most of the tech techie guys, even the techie guys, uh, when they say uh, open source or GPL, they mean, okay, the source code is really open. I, well, not just that. Source code is open, but you don't have the essential freedoms that uh, you actually think that you have with it. Let's say there is an open source operating, uh, open source software. Uh, everything about it, uh, okay, you can see the code, but you can't modify the code. Uh, you can't, you can't um, modify it and resale it. Uh, you can't, um, you know, uh, there are, I would say, four freedoms. Let's say I will Google it. Four freedoms of GPL, right? Uh, you might, um, well, you might have heard of, like, you know, Tesla versus the other guy. Uh, who, okay, I think I'm <laughs> uh, probably nearing my sleep time now. Um, there was uh, Tesla versus, who's that guy? Uh, there were two uh, major top dogs in the old uh, olden days um, uh, who uh, were into like you know Tesla wanted to have alternative current and there's another guy uh, I forget his name there's a movie co uh, coming as well current wars right so 
in that uh, uh edison sorry yeah thomas Alva edison i think uh, correct me if i'm wrong he google that okay edison dc current yeah okay so thomas Alva edison and uh, you have um mm, tesla tesla was for uh, ac current and thomas Alva edison wanted to like you know promote dc Right, they were kind of, they worked together and still arrived the same way you have Richard Stallman and Linus Thorvalds, right? Uh, so Richard, I mean, they still respect each other, but they strongly disagree with each other. Um, I, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, but they still, you know, uh, they have contributed majorly to the open source ecosystem or GPL free source open uh ecosystem so gpl gpl offers you uh like you know freedoms the freedom to run the program as you wish for any purpose that is freedom zero that is gpl okay i'm talking about general public license then you have the freedom to study how the program works and change it so it does your computing as you wish that is freedom to study how the program works to look at the code right um then uh the freedom number two is the freedom to redistribute copies so you can help your neighbor or anyone right your neighbor your family member whomever uh so basically the stuff is okay if you buy a book the book is yours uh you know you can lend it to your neighbor the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions to others right so uh, to put it simply freedom zero is uh, you can run however you want, right? The originator, the person who has sold uh, that software to you, he uh, should not or must not uh, be able to dictate on how you use that software, right? Because you bought it, you use whatever you want with it. You bought shoes, okay, you want to wear it or you want to keep it on your head, that's up to you, right? The Nike doesn't uh, get to tell you, or Adidas doesn't get to tell you, Puma doesn't get to tell you, how to use the issues. Uh, the freedom number two is uh, the freedom to study how the program works. Uh, that means you can select, uh, uh, I mean, you you get to study, you can see the code, you know, what's behind it, how it's working, what are the inner workings, is there a Trojan horse installed in this, uh, you know, uh, operating system? You might have heard of you know, a lot of phones have these backdoors or applications have backdoors where you can't you know do anything about it uh, because you can't see the code it's all like you no know, close it's compiled in such a way that you can't see it so uh, that is number two and that is um, one of the main reason why open source is extremely big in enterprise systems are uh, especially government systems where uh, security is a big concern right they want to go for uh, open source operating system so location i mean all these things no i want to turn them off i don't want to skip 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 okay start using centos and then uh, the freedom to redistribute copies so i mean that means you can go ahead and uh, redistribute uh, this uh, copy of the software that you have that is the software that you have gotten right the exactly the way it is to your neighbor or to whomever you want right the freedom to redistribute you can give it to anyone uh, nobody get to tell you like you know how to uh, whether you should uh, or you should not do it or you know they should not put restrictions on whom you should give it to or whom you should not give it to or only you should use then uh, fourth freedom is you can alter it uh, it the freedom to read, uh, distribute copies of your modified version. So you can distribute the original and the modified version. This is, so, this is what you mean, what most people mean by open source. Uh, so, uh, but uh, it, the interestingly enough, the, these four core values never ever say, even though it says freedom, 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 free, here free means free as in freedom, not free as in free beer. Uh, that is how uh, at least you no know, Richard Stallman uh, puts his argument when he says what he means by freedom, right? So then you have uh, open source. Open source means that okay, the source code is open. That is, you have uh, the second option. That is, uh, I'm sorry, the freedom one. 
You don't have freedom zero, freedom two, freedom three, but you just have freedom one where you can look at the code and that's it, right? You can look at the code and you can't do anything. That is open source. So source is open, but you can't do anything with it, right? So that is what they mean. So this is uh, just a brief introduction of center, uh, open source, Linux, and in, et cetera, right? Uh, and I wanted to uh, do some stuff on CentOS, probably try to do some shell scripting videos uh, for fun and maybe for you guys as well. So, uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in and uh, you have a great one. Take care.